We have been looking at uh, Marx's, this passage from Marx's uh, work Grundrisse, and we have basically covered uh, most of the aspects uh, or the issues raised in this passage. But today, in this final uh, video, uh, I just wanted to expand a bit uh, and think a bit more about alienation. So, but before we do that, let's start with the passage. But if capital appears as the product of labor, the product of labor also appears as capital. No, no more as a simple product, not as exchangeable goods, but as capital. Object, objectified labor becomes mastery, has command over living labor, it appears equally to be the result of labor, that its products appears an alien property, the product of labor, an independent mode of existence opposed to living labor. So this contrast between living labor and the objective hard labor, and equally autonomous value. So the, the product of the labor acquires an autonomous value, value autonomous from or and independent from its creator, that is the living labor. That the product of labor, object, objective or labor, has acquired its own soul from living labor and establish itself opposite living labor as an alien force, an independent force, an independent force. Consider from this point of standpoint of labor, labor thus appears to be active in the production process in such a way that it seems to reject its realization in objective contradictions as alien reality. Consider from the standpoint of labor, the labor appears to be active in the production process in such a way that it seems to reject it seems to reject its realization and objective contradiction as alien reality. And thus it puts itself in the position of an unsubstantial labor capacity. Endowed only with needs against this reality which is estranged, which is estranged from it and which belong not to it but to others that it establishes its own reality not as an entity of its own but merely as an entity for others, for capitalists, and thus also as a mere entity of others or other entity against itself. Um, so look at, uh, let's look at the concept, because the concept of alienation is uh, permeated through and through in this, uh, in this passage and we looked at it uh, the last time as well, so you might want to review that. But I want to focus a bit more on the concept of alienation and its, constitu its uh, constituent parts. So what is translated in English as alienation comes from actually two separate uh, German terms. So alienation actually and sometime um, in this passage as well sometimes they translate one aspect of this and other times the other aspects. So Alienation basically uh, translate two terms which as far as Marx is considered uh, Marx is concerned originate from Hegel. So one is and uh, Fremdung. Okay. Uh, now, and from doing, can be translated as estrangement, as 
French. So the alienate, you know, estrangement becoming estrangement. So this is estrangement in English uh, conveys something like alienation. It also uh, so, you know conveys separation. Estrangement of spouses for example separated. So alienation can be a translation of just this term in fact literally speaking because if you looked at look at the actual German uh, word and from dong so these are ung so that's like English ing and um, and is sort of uh, prefix but the framed here the word framed means foreign alien in German or near German so and framed on estrangement alienation so so that end framed on but there's another term um, which the concept of uh, alienation not just a word also includes and sometime so estrangement and framed on that's a separate concept and then the other concept is uh, and how it's the wrong and and how the wrong is generally translated as either externalization or it's also translated as objectification and it is also translated as alienation so both words are in a sense uh, translated as alienation even though the concept alienation actually is a sum of these two concepts so let let's to uh, look at these two concepts and see how they uh, with our understanding of Marx's conception of alienation. So, um, first the end frame doing part. So, separation. So, separation. So, separation. So the product of labor is separated from product is separated from the labor who is actually the producer. Separated in the sense many senses like doesn't own it. Uh, And through this separation, it become alien to him that he no longer recognizes himself in it. Recognizes himself in it. Uh, or 
and if we look at the part of externalization and objectification um, the externalization part is the externalization part or objectification it has become an object one of uh, aspect of it, this objectification is the independence autonomy of the object uh, and it is independence from its producer in that this object has become part of a chain whose purpose is ultimately to keep that chain going and that chain is so the purpose of that chain is the accumulation for the sake of accumulation and that's what capitalist wants and in a sense it is independent not just of the labor but it is independent uh, of the capitalists as well because capitalists are also subservient to the logic of capital accumulation as long as they commit themselves to that logic and so is is the labor so the object become independent of the subject of the living labor in that it is not part of his plans or her plans but it is part of the chain, part of an independent chain whose purpose is accumulation for the sake of accumulation. So the object has become independent, it has independent soul and it is independent to the extent that it is independent of the subjectivity of the labor and in fact subjectivity of the capitalist as well as it has become a part of uh, part of the an independent chain chain which is run according to the logic of capital accumulation it is not sub subservient to the wishes desires imaginations of either laborer or capitalist and in fact the laborer lose control over the production of this produce as well because that plan of production and design will change according to the logic of capital accumulation as well so in this sense this uh, product of labor has become external laws has objectified has become independent of the subjectivity, subjectivity of the labor. It is not the reflection of its subjectivity. It has become. Uh, it has become independent of that subjectivity, and it has taken its own existence. So, in a sense, this goes back to this subject uh, obviously the whole tradition of subjectivism which starts with Descartes and, and takes a peak and takes a specific uh, meaning in Kant through which Hegel draws this concept and through which Marx go got his ideas and there's a huge uh, uh, romantic influence there as well um, that uh, so the raw nature is not an object object is in a sense the construction of uh, an interaction between subject and the nature raw nature which is an abstract concept similarly a subject is an abstract concept as well but this 
object is at least in part construction and creation of the subjects the subject uh, in as long as his labor has transformed uh, this nature so we don't find objects out there we actually work on nature to construct object according to our design according to our freedom or autonomy and when, once this object becomes subservient to something independent of us and take its own existence and we no longer control it then this is what is considered objectification we when we treat object as it is a part of part of raw nature that's why a sort of realism is considered these philosophies as realism in a sense which is independent of uh, the construction of the subject as uh, a form of objectification a form of uh, externalized external reality with which we have no interaction and no control over and which control us in our lives so we are going back to pre autonomy period pre freedom freedom period pre enlightenment period pre scientific period pre romantic period so that's that's no good so this is this is the so although capitalism is part of getting up out of that dependence on raw nature and in the in the production process itself though the object of subject have become independent nature for us in the sense that they obey the logic which sort of uh, is independent of our wishes our desire our ideas our and we no longer see in objects our cons constructs because they no longer uh they they are no longer our creation but they have sort of come to uh directly or indirectly come to dominate us and to objectify us in a sense as well in a sense this object has become subject in a way and we as subject have become object in a way so something uh, something like that so i think and um and this um goes back to feuerbach because i think that can feuerbach's ideas uh, are in a sense uh, um in a sense the direct influence on marx so feuerbach uh, obviously he wasn't talking about capitalism so that was and that's why marx criticized him um uh he was a materialist enough uh, he was talking about god feuerbach but the ideas behind in criticism is the same feuerbach so for feuerbach man is not a so man and his relationship with god so man is a subject and according to feuerbach god was the creation of man and as an idea he created this concept of god so that he, he can express his own real essence so god is basically an idealized version of man but somehow he forgets that it's his own creation and he or she consider god as an independent existence an independent 
object or independent subject who somehow has created man uh, and then he bows to this God. In in similar way, the object man has created this object as a subject to realize itself, to external or to you know um, realize himself, realize his creativity, realize his purposes. But he somehow forgets it uh, or somehow is caused to forget it and this object becomes rather independent. And then this man come to uh, be subservient to this object. And the whole system which is behind uh, the chain in which this object is a, is, is, is a, is a part. So, for, so, so, so that's the, instead of God you have the product and instead of the simple man you have a labor. But the idea is uh, the same. So for Feuerbach man is not a uh, self alienated God but instead God is God is self alienated man so man doesn't realize that he has created man this is actually himself just a war idealized. So, in fact, he thinks that he is worshipping independent reality, but he is actually worshipping himself, but without realizing that it is himself. So, that's where alienation comes from. So, this God is merely man's essence abstracted. Abstracted, absolute law, absolutized, absolutized, and estranged from man. Estranged from man in the sense that separated from man, he doesn't. So, man is alienated from himself because he creates and puts above himself. when and what he creates. In the case of Feuerbach, God. In the case of Marx, the object. And imagine alien high being and bows before him as a slave. The so man bows him before God as a slave. They create God and bows become this way. Similarly, create object and whole capital accumulation in order to get rid of slavery, but we became slave to this process itself. So, for Feuerbach, the de-alienation is to realize this and then uh, then uh, Abolition, uh, abolition of this uh, strange, strange picture of man, and realizing that man is actually a creator, and so sort of uh, confessing, and sort of um, admitting, and realizing that this is me, my idealized version, and then stop pretending that we are worshiping God and. You know, basically, worship ourselves and make ourselves God in this world. Similarly, Marx said that the abolition of uh, this uh, de alienation of man consists in the abolition of this strange picture of object, which uh, c considers the object of human labor as something independent from man, and realize that this, this object is 
is creation. This capitalism is our creation, so it should serve ourselves. We shouldn't serve capitalism. So that's the that's the peril, I think. So just in the in the light of uh, this, I think I don't need to say much more. If we read uh, this paragraph again, we'll realize that it's much more clear. Not uh, fully transparent. So, but if a capital appears as the product of labor, the product of labor also appears as capital. No more as a simple product, not as exchangeable good, but as a, as capital. Yeah. As capital, which is linked to the, this independent chain and logic of cap capitalism, which is all logic of capital accumulation, which is not subservient to us. All are, which actually come to dominate us in our lives. So objectified labor becomes mastery. So it masters the living labor. So our own labor actually come to dominate our lives as command over living labor. It appears equally to be the result of labor that its product appears as alien property and independent mode of existence opposed to living labor. An equally autonomous value that the product of labor, objectified labor, has acquired its own soul from living labor and has established, established itself opposite living labor as an alien force, alien force because it stops us from realizing our creativity and it stops ourselves from realizing our status as creator, uh, autonomous being and subservient us to our own creation. Consider from the standpoint of labor, labor thus appears to be active in the production process in such a way that it seems to reject its realization in objective contradictions as alien reality and thus it puts itself in the position of an unsubstantial labor capacity endowed only with needs against this reality which is estranged from it and and which belong not to it but to others that it establish its own reality not as an entity of its own but merely as an entity for others thus also a mere entity of others or other entity against itself. Okay, so I'll stop here. Thanks.